Great. How do I get myself into these things? Look how long these are. Guess I'm making a second trip home to get the grinder and sawzall. That's what happens when you get poor information from the people you're picking up from. A wise man once told me, once you know how to make money and work hard, you'll never be poor. Well, this is how I make my money. All right guys, welcome back to my channel. We're here at a scrap job and a contractor had changed all the garage doors on this building here. And um, didn't tell me that all the stuff, he said it was the garage tracking. So when you think of garage doors, you think of, oh yeah, the tracks and the motors and stuff. The stuff must have been for 16 foot doors. These, th this stuff is 20 feet long. I, I, I put some of them on top of the truck already, the lighter ones, but I couldn't fit them all in. So my contractor buddy gave me bad information. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, you can fit the stuff in your truck. I mean, look at these things. They're got to be 20 feet long. They're the old motors. There was three separate garage doors with the springs. And look how long that is. That rod with the springs on it. That's longer than my pickup truck. So I can't cut that because it's solid uh, shaft. So I might have to use... I mean, if I had a chop saw, which I don't have to bring with me, I'm hoping my grinder can cut it enough to snap it. I know these, these are hardened frames. I've dealt with those before. I've tried cutting them with a sawzall and it just tears the blade up. And these are galvanized. They're pretty thick. I might be able to cut them with the sawzall. But now I got to make a trip back to my house and come all the way back out here. I don't know if this other stuff is going. He said just the garage door stuff. And look at this spring. This one's broke and popped, and there's a ton of tension on that. So now I gotta cut that with the freaking. I mean, if I had a torch, a acetylene set, I could cut these, but you know, that doesn't get involved with free scrap metal removal. So I called him and told him that, uh, hey, I don't know if the homeowner wants to pay or if you wanna pay, but I said, if I gotta come back and cut this, I'll take all the small stuff. I told him, but if I have to come back, and that one's dangerous. You know, I said, if I got to come back, make a separate trip out here and cut this stuff. You know, I said, we're going to have to come up with a price. So he just messaged me back before I started this video. So I figured I might as well film. He said the homeowner doesn't want to pay. So I told him, I said, well, you took it down. So you're supposed to remove all it. So I said, I said, you know, can you, can you at least throw me 150 bucks? He said, dude, 250 bucks. He's like, just cut him and get him out of here. So it was an extra 250 bucks because this is, this isn't free scrap metal removal. I got to come in and grind these and I got to make a separate trip home. So I got a 20 minute ride home. So I might as well just unload that. The, the white truck is full, which you'll see in this video. I picked a bunch of stuff up for my buddy, John, and a bunch of lawnmower decks and chairs and stuff. So now I got to go home, get all my batteries, all my tools and come out here. I have a Sawzall, but I only have one battery and I can't cut this stuff with the Sawzall. So yeah, you guys could say I wasn't prepared, but. You know, it was poor information from who wanted me to pick the stuff up. And it happens from time to time. And, uh, like, these things, to cut these up, I mean, they have nice electric motors on it. And there's some weight, but there's only, like, maybe $70 or $80 in scrap here, guys. The electric motors, there might be a little bit more. But um, if I got to come in here and use Sawzall blades and double gas now, and somebody's going to pay for it. If not, I told myself I'll leave it here. I said, I'll take the small stuff and, and um, you know, just make it not my problem. I, I don't feel like doing it. It's supposed to rain today. The weather's poopy. Um, yeah, everybody's like, oh, you're a crybaby. But if you let people take advantage of you, they will. You know what I mean? Free removal is I back up, put it in the truck, and I go. That That's my deal. If you guys want to come and do this stuff for nothing, that, that's up to you. But I got an extra $250 out of the guy because I wasn't doing this for free. But all right, we're going to go home and unload this stuff. I just put the straps on it. And you can see just those pieces are over my bed and over my rack. Look at it. So it's eight foot and another eight foot. They're 16 foot long doors. And those other things are 20 feet because I measured them with mine. So that's as long as my truck, the whole things. So we're gonna go home, get some tools and come back and finish this job. All right, guys, we made it back to the house. Had a couple little pieces of aluminum. I had made a stop before this, this morning. It was like seven o'clock and the lady kind of 
was nasty she said I woke her up or woke her baby up so hey I'm not perfect I told him I'd be there in the morning but there was a brass pressure tank there so I got a little piece of brass they had two air conditioners then here's everything I had in the back of my truck um, besides that air conditioning thing we ripped apart an air conditioner too me and Joe brought a load of tin in lunchbox so there's some stuff that was in the truck and these things it wasn't much in the truck it was like a lot of small stuff Oh, and there's a couple pieces over there that I have to cut. I threw them over there so easy to cut. I put this one on and realized I'm kind of boning myself, but there's an electric motor on that. I got to see how hard that is to unbolt, but I might just leave that. It's on an aluminum rail, but I don't, it's got a, a metal worm gear through it. I might not even bother with it. Sometimes it's just easier to let it go, man. You know, you spend, you spend freaking 20 minutes dicking with that when I can go, I have other stuff to go do. I tell you guys this a lot, and you guys torch me in the comments, but, you know, it, you know, if you, it, when you have as much time as you guys, then maybe you could do it, but I can't. But anyway, I'm going to go back and get my, my Sawzall and my um, grinder so I can cut these at the other house. And then here's what me and Joe picked up yesterday. So a buddy of mine buys all my lawnmowers and stuff from me. And, uh, we basically, he doesn't, we doesn't pay me cash, but he trades me with all the lawnmower stuff he doesn't need. So I gave him a rider and some other stuff. He gave me a bunch of stuff. So he had almost a full load here in the truck. You know, these are all just the parts that he doesn't use no more. All the old stuff, like this axles froze, you know, the old decks that, you know, nobody even uses or, or they're just too roached out and the spindles are bad. He gives me all that stuff. And most of the stuff is this. Most of the stuff that you see in this truck is stuff I gave him that was on tractors and he parted them out. And it's the stuff he's had for years and he don't use no more. So I got to put all this stuff on that trailer. So that'll be, that'll be loaded up today. But yeah, me and Joe were ripping apart some air conditioners and stuff. We were waiting yesterday for the guy to call me. But I got to get... Light. I gotta get some tools together. I'm gonna bring my big flex sawzall and my grinder. I'm gonna grab my bag over here and every battery I got, cause that grinder is vicious on batteries. But all right, guys, those things are actually heavier than I thought, guys. Those springs, they might be about 80 to 100 pounds. One of the small sections, and there's what two more of those and those other pieces, which I don't know. But, I mean, there's quite a bit of weight there. I'm surprised they're actually, like, I was picking them up. I'm like, oh, man, they got some weight to them. But, hmm. all right, let me get my tools together, and I'll go back over there. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm done. They didn't say anything about that stuff. No one's here, I guess, so I'm just going to leave that stuff. But I cut that with the grinding thing and then moved it, and it snapped took a little bit only one uh, battery though I only had to cut one of them the other one I cut the spring and it like unraveled like a bastard it was actually pretty dangerous I didn't think about it I cut that spring right there and it was like <laughs> it spun a thousand revolutions I had my foot on it and it was spinning with my foot on it I didn't think about it it was just when I hurt me get this done because I had another person call me and uh Another person called me about taking a washing machine or a stove and a refrigerator out of a house. They're going to empty out all the nasty food and stuff, but this job is done in the bank. So we're going to go home and put this stuff on the trailer and then empty the other white truck on the trailer. And then I'll go pick those appliances up. Almost turned out to be a good day. I thought that was going to be a lot harder, but man, was that spring dangerous, guys. All right, we made it back home. I got all the stuff unloaded. I put the dolly in the back of the truck because I have to go get that refrigerator and stove. And oh, I'm gonna leave my tools on the ground. As you see, I took all the bolts out of these. Took all the electric motors off. There's two, uh, three of them. The one that was on this one, the older one, was really heavy. The other two, not so much. And I cut the other ones I threw over here. And I just tried to get it all on here. And I was thinking about it. Unloading that stuff on this trailer but if i move that one pole i can get that probably that refrigerator and then that stove here i end up with a little room in the front but this side's really heavy with all that stuff and if i put that there it might not be that heavy 
So I kind of boned myself. I should, probably should have laid it all flat along the bottom of the trailer. But um, I don't know. I think what I'll do is put the put the refrigerator, then the stove, and then I'll stack some of these lawnmower decks, the heavier ones, to get me some weight in the front. Somebody asked me how I load my trailers. And how I usually do it is medium weight, your heaviest weight over your axle always, and then this side I do light. So if you see I threw these on, I got most of the weight over the axle or a little bit in front. Think of this as a teeter, like a, like a, like a seesaw, like a teeter. You know, if you have too much weight on the back, it'll pick the front up. And if you're too tail heavy, it'll pick the front of your truck up, which will make it wag. Which, you know, on, in this case... You know, on this trailer, I can always move weight forward if I feel I need to. You know, you want at least an inch or two of squat when you hook the trailer up. Every truck uh, varies and, you know, you don't want too much squat, but you also don't want to be too tail heavy. When you're loading a trailer like this, it's really difficult. You need a good strong truck with a lot of payload. Towing this with a 150 like that, I got to make sure I have to be so perfect. But this trailer, not so much, being it's only 12 feet long. So I, I always tell people, medium weight, your heaviest weight from here, from there, from the from the back of the axle to like maybe a foot or two in front of the axle, and then all this is light. So you want to you want to that's the way you want to do it. I've done it for years. I've loaded the trailer thousands of times, and I've only ever been off once or twice, and I've had to redirect or move some things like those lower decks. I can always throw some up front to get more tongue weight, but it just comes with experience on loading your trailers. But yeah, so we're going to get ready. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get ready here, and I'm going to go to this lady. Oh, I'm up on a rock. I was like, why am I? Why is my leg floating? I was about to say I have it that heavy on the rear. But yeah, so what I'll do is I just won't put too many of those lawnmower decks. I'll throw those light chairs on this side, and I'll put some lawnmower decks here and there. To fill in the gap i'll show you in the video so you guys can understand how i do it because that little pile is not that heavy this little pile i mean i'd say there's 1500 pounds just in that pile those those ones with the springs on them are very very heavy and all that crap is just light stuff so i figure i'll throw some chairs on the back and forward here a couple long more decks here uh, refrigerator it's probably 200 pounds i think it's a double door one i think he said and then a stove another 125 130 pounds and then i'll put a bunch of decks here and some of those rears you know and just put as much weight you know from this section forward if i'm gonna get you know a couple hundred pounds to offset what's on there already but i already know it's going to be heavy onto one side but it might not once i put it here it might just be heavier on this side and then light and then heavier in the front on one side the trailer you know this is sturdy trailer so it shouldn't make a difference all right guys i went and picked that stuff up but i uh emptied off the truck i put it on i want to empty this other white truck off for my 250 um i mean i drank too much quick look at that like slossy feeling in your stomach Ugh. but um they had a refrigerator and uh, a stove, and that refrigerator was nasty. I had to throw my gloves away. I emptied the stuff out for him. Hey, guy threw me 20 bucks. I felt bad, though, because his, his wife couldn't even, like, stand it, man. She was like, <laughs> That's pretty funny. But, yeah, that that's the guy right there. She's smelly, man. Look at all the mouse shit along. Oh, this is bad. But, yeah, I'm going to throw all this stuff on there now guys and i don't know i might go to scrapyard tomorrow because these things got some weight to them and they're heavy i don't know when you snap my fingers you'll see it loaded all right guys i got done just in time it's starting to rain and pretty steady too it was sprinkling a little bit but god that blue roof looks good these are vorden's blue but yeah we filled the trailer Put all the decks in the front. Try to make sure I had the weight distributed right. Which I'm usually pretty good. It's just something I do and I don't think about it anymore. But yeah, that's going to be our screenshot right there. Let's get some top so we can put some writing on it. Yeah, guys. Not bad. Filled this trailer in one day. I mean, it's not completely stacked, but I mean, I bet you there's decent... That's a decent load, guys, for, for a day. Now, I know you guys would have been like, oh, I would have just rode that to the scrapyard. 
45 minute ride to a scrapyard. So <clears throat> I wish usually what I used to do is when I got a load like this, I would throw some copper, some brass in there. And I have some irony brass I'm probably going to bring with me just to get rid of it. But I have a bucket and a half. So I bet you I, I bet you I got over 100 pounds of dirty brass that I just don't want to clean. I cleaned all the easy stuff and now it's just the most miserable stuff. But yeah, guys, that's a pretty decent load. I'll be honest with you, with the lawnmower decks that are heavy and all that tracking we cut, I think the lightest thing on there might be that refrigerator and, the, you know, some random small stuff that we had on there before. But that's not bad for a day. I mean, I wish I had more better stuff to put on this load, but that's how it works sometimes. My screen is completely wet. Yeah, guys, uh, I mean, it is what it is. You know, sometimes you can't really judge what you get for scrap you know take what you could get there's stuff i leave all the time because i just don't want to deal with it let me go sit in the truck so yeah guys when you're loading your trailers you just got to be mindful of not putting too much tongue weight on your trailer and not having not enough because then it'll get wobbly um the other thing is is most of you guys that you tow with trucks and stuff you know your average f-150 1500 truck you know, can't take a lot of tongue weight. 1,000 pounds of tongue weight, you know, it's usually 10%. So if your trailer's registered, 10,000 pound trailer, easy man, 1,000% tongue weight. Or 10% would be 1,000 pounds of tongue weight. You put 1,000 pounds of tongue weight on pretty much any 1,500 or, or, two, or 1,500 or F-150 style truck, it's going to be squatting. Because you got to remember, it's all the way to the furthest point. You might have 1,000 pounds in the bed of the truck. But your hitch is hanging, you know, the furthest part of your truck. And then, you know, the eight inches, a, a foot, whatever your hitch size is. Which causes them to really droop. And it's just the way it is. Most 1500s and, and F-150s have between 13, I've seen between 1100 and, like, like my truck is 1900 pounds. So they're in that realm. But with 1000 pounds of tongue weight, even on my other, on my yellow truck with the Sumo Springs on it, which help. It'll still, it'll still have, you know, an inch or two of squat with a thousand pounds, you know, so you have to know how to, uh, to, um, to load your trailer correctly. Now, if you don't know, or if you're a new timer and you're going to buy a hitch anyway, there's a company called Waysafe Hitches. They sell a hitch with a scale in it and you put it on your truck. And then when you're loading, you could see how much it goes down and you could judge, oh, look, you know. I have 800 pounds of tongue weight, my, and I'm only pulling a 3,000 pound trailer. You know, most of the hitches on your truck aren't, aren't rated for that. Not the ball hitch, the hitch that's attached to your frame. Most of those, like even mine, the maximum is 1,200 pounds. But this truck can hold uh, tow 12,500. So if I if I pull 12,500 pounds, I can only have 1,200 pounds of tongue weight. And I'll be honest with you, there's sometimes my big trailer, I've had 2,000 pounds of tongue weight. So I'm legally over, and the hitch is always built stronger than it needs to be. But you know, there's no way of judging it. That's why when Waysafe came out with that hitch, that's that's kind of like a dummy proof thing. You know, you put it on the truck. There's also another hitch you could buy. Uh, it's like a jack, like a roll up jack on your trailers. It has a ball on it. You put it underneath your tongue and then jack your trailer down to put weight on it. Uh, they sell them at E Trailer and a bunch of other companies. Um, and you could judge how much tongue weight is on your trailer, which is pretty good if you're hauling a camper or something like that. I mean, with hauling scrap, when you're loading it differently or loading cars, you never know what your tongue weight's going to be. So that might be something that you might want to, a tool you might want to put in there just if you're worried about having too much tongue weight. Or if you're towing a small trailer with a minivan or an SUV and, you know, you want to make sure that that's just right, you could put that hitch on your truck or your van or your SUV and when you're loading your trailer, you can say, okay, I got enough. And you'll notice when you put weight on the back, it'll pick it back up. So that might be something. Um, I think that's more for people who don't have 2,500s and 3,500s and bigger trailers and trucks. You, you know, usually when, when you're loading the trailer, you just look at it and be like, all right, it's good. You just know. But, I mean, if you're towing more than 12,000 pounds, I would say you need one. And if you're towing, you know, with a minivan or an SUV or a lightweight, you know, medium duty pickup truck like a Colorado Ranger, that type thing, Toyota Tacoma, a lot of guys use, Nissan Frontiers. I mean, that's what my buddy uses, a Nissan Frontier. And 
I mean, you put 500 pounds on weight and it's like this. It's, 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 it's horrible. But they're not made to tow heavy-duty weight. They say they're ready to tow 5,000 pounds, but you're 500 pounds of tongue weight, and the thing is squatting to the moon. It's almost unsafe. So, you know, just be safe out there, guys. And remember, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm, me and Lunchbox are probably going to bring – I don't know if Lunchbox is working tomorrow. I'll have to call him and see if he wants to get a day in. Got really nothing else planned for tomorrow. It's just been slow, and the weather's been crummy, and it's supposed to – rain, I think, all day tomorrow, so we might just go to the scrap, I might just go to scrap right by myself and spare Joe the misery, but he's been, you know, like anybody, he needs money too, and he don't care if it rains or not, but, um, yeah, so, all right, guys, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and, um, I'm gonna put a poll out tonight on different things, what would you, what would your dream, uh, towing and hauling truck could be if you could afford it, I'll put some things up there, no cyber trucks on that one, <laughs> I think it's a joke. But uh all right guys, peace. Oh, but remember, remember boys and girls, it's not a job, it's an adventure. I gotta stop using the F word in my videos. But uh it's an adventure. Every day is an adventure, guys. Today's adventure, I drove around and didn't really do much, but we're loaded, we'll make money tomorrow, guys. Sorry I keep looking around and my neighbor stare your neighbor stares at me while I'm sitting in my truck or I'm working out here. I always feel like Karen's watching me. <laughs>